my lo my lord and my god, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and grace to me this time of prayer fruitful. My mother immaculate Saint Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Saint Luke tells us today your parable Jesus of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. We remember it well. The Pharisee, standing up so that everyone could see him, began to pray, I thank you, Lord, that I am not like other men, thieves and just adulterers, or like that tax collector there. I can imagine him with this sneer on his face. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not as ugly as that one. And I don't stink like that over there. <laughs> and I don't smoke nor drink despicable alcoholic drinks. Now, why does this Pharisee seem to be so bitter? Why do we always imagine him with a sad face? Because meanwhile, the tax collector was praying in the same temple, St. Luke tells us he dared not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, O God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that one, you tell us, Jesus, went down to his house, justified, happy. We can't be happy if the only thing that motivates us is to compare ourselves with others in an attempt to stand out. Comparisons kill joy. I found a very interesting study to prove this point. And as a scientist myself, I always like those studies that go wrong. <laughs> the ones that end up proving that the researchers' assumptions were wrong. So in the book, The How of Happiness, by Dr. Sonia Lubomirsky, she quotes this example. The study was conducted at Stanford University. Two groups were separated. In one group were those who scored high on the happiness test and who were also rated as happy or very happy by their family and friends. And the other group, well, you get the picture. Those who scored lower on the happiness test and were described by the relatives as not very happy. And the research team wanted to study this hypothesis. According to their intuition, the happiest people were happy because they compare themselves with people who are inferior to them, and so seeing themselves as superior would increase their self-esteem. And the less happy people, they assumed, would be so because they always compare themselves with better people and became depressed when they saw that they weren't good enough. So they performed lots of tests. For example, they gave tasks to solve to two people in the same room. One was the individual being studied, and the other one member of the research team. They made individuals they were studying understand how they were ostensibly performing better or worse than the other person in the room, and check how that affected the ratings on happiness. So the idea was to see how it affects a happy person to be faster or smarter than another person, and how it affects them to be with someone who is smarter or faster than them. And obviously the same test was performed with the other group, the unhappy group. Well, they didn't expect the results. It turned out that the happier people couldn't care less about what the other person in the room was doing. <laughs> it only affected those who were unhappy. Basically, the happy people couldn't care two hoods what the other did. Happy people simply didn't compare themselves. <laughs> I love the results of the study. And it's very evangelical. I was reminded of your conversation, Jesus, with St. Peter, at the end of John's Gospel, after asking him three times to feed your sheep, 
you ask St. Peter, follow me. And St. John tells us, Then Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following him. And when he saw him, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? Do you follow me? What is that to you? Stop comparing yourself. You, Jesus, have made us all unique. You ask different things of every one of us. You never told your disciples to imitate one another, but that we should imitate you. You told us to follow you and not some TikToker or YouTuber or Instagrammer or influencer. <laughs> The world is bombarding us with information about what others are doing, what others are saying, what others are buying, what others are wearing. And we read news of other people's successes and failures. And we get the Instagram feed of the last celebrity and the Botox operation. And we can get depressed that they all look prettier and taller and smarter than we are. And they have more followers and more likes and more downloads. One day we're happy because we found a job until we see that the neighbor gets paid more money. And we love our car until we are overtaken by the neighbor's one. And so one becomes bitter, Jesus, thinking that nothing is good enough, that we are not good enough. And I guess that we give you, Lord, a hard time as well. You who have given us everything and see that sometimes we are absolutely unable to enjoy it. Like a father who spends a fortune on his family's holidays and sees how all his children spend their holidays plugged into a six-inch screen watching how other friends have more sun or the swimming pool is bigger or their holidays last one day longer, or they have been in Disney World and have met Mickey Mouse in person. <laughs> what is that to you? You follow me. Jesus, you love us this way, and that's why you made us this way. You see, I'm not very tall, and I could be bitter all day long when I see so many giants on the street. <laughs> But I think God specifically designed me with precision the millimeters of height he has given me. And besides, I can always find clothes my size in every shop. <laughs> now, I know that some people think my ears are big. Well, most ears seem ridiculously small to me, and I don't say anything, okay? <laughs> I'm like the grandmother in Little Red Riding Hood because they are to hear my penitence better. <laughs> okay, that there are people smarter than me, good for them. Let them do more sadakus. I'm going to play football with my friends. <laughs> Comparisons kill joy. They rob us of happiness. In your eyes, Jesus, I'm perfect as I am. I'm happy as well. So better spend less time following Instagrammers with edited photos of photoshopped faces and fake smiles and fictitious happiness and spend more time with real flesh and blood friends who love you and whom you love. Hey, and if God made that guy taller, well, I'm sorry for him. I thank God that he made me normal-sized and I pray for the tall guy that uh, they realize it's not their fault and we love them as they are. <laughs> my Immaculate Mother, I am a child of God and I'm also your child. So what more could I wish for? Help me not to fall into the temptation of comparing myself to anyone else. Because I am not anyone else. I am me. I don't have to live a second-hand life, someone else's life, 
a life that is no mine. Mary, don't let me waste my time comparing to others. May I be always me, and only me, and compare myself to no one else but Christ. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. And Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.